Hello everybody and welcome back to the Code Wrinkles channel for a new video that I hope would be very interesting for you. Today or in this video we're gonna talk about Blazor once again and we'll be talking about how do we organize or how do we structure our Blazor applications. And I think this is a very valid discussion point because when we look at tutorials or demos everything seems simple. We just use the template that we have in Visual Studio, we add a bunch of components there and everything seems to work fine. However, when we really go to build a Blazor application, we'll see that the most probably this type of applications will have a very feature-rich UI. And then just throwing components around in the pages folder might not really be the best approach to do that. So in this case, my take is that we should maybe try to also look and learn from other uh, popular front-end frameworks. And in my specific case, I have or I come forward with, uh, with a proposal on how to structure Blazor applications based on the experience that I had working with uh, or on Angular projects. Let's start talking about this and focus first on the folder structure. This would allow us to understand exactly what approaches do we have commonly when we build our applications. And when it comes to how do we really want to organize our code, it usually comes, it usually drills down to two basic approaches. We have one or the first one, the most popular maybe for, for all of us that come from an MVC environment is to follow this convention based approach. And in this convention based approach, what we do is following actually a strict naming convention. This means that we have folders like controllers and all the controllers we put in that controllers folder. We have probably a folder called services and all our, our services go in the services folder. And we can continue like that uh, with also other uh, folder types like uh, event handlers or comments, whatever. We just create folders and all the code that, uh, that contain that type of, of, of classes or that type of functionality in the application, we put it really there. However, this can result in really a lot of files and uh, in a very big folder structure in uh, bigger applications. And this has a very important downside because, for instance, when at a certain point somebody comes to us and says, hey, when I want to go to the order details on my eShop, then I have this bug that the product is not displayed correctly. So what we will have to do in this case, well, we, we would have to find or to trace down where we have our bug. And this means that we would usually start with the controllers probably, which is the place where all the requests come in. Then we would navigate to the different services, to the different event handlers, to the different uh, comments, to the repositories, whatever. But we don't have really a way to, let's say, to pinpoint a very specific location in our entire application structure for which we can be confident that the bug is there in that specific folder. And this can result in a very, very messy application, especially when it comes down to uh, maintenance. And then there is the other approach, which is very popular among front-end frameworks, which is the feature-based approach. And according to this feature-based approach, we organize our folders and files based on the features that we want to display or that we have in our applications. What this means is that our features uh, will be self-contained. This means that in turn, when I have in my application a folder called orders, it means that this is the folder that contains all the code that I have regarding my orders, which means that in that folder, I would basically put the model classes that I need for, for that functionality. I would put the, the services that are specific for the specific feature. I will put the components and basically all the classes, no matter what, what kind of logical role do they have in our applications, but as long as they belong to that certain feature alone, we put it there. And this, this makes it actually very easy to find problems when somebody reports us a bug. And if we go back to the example that we had earlier, it's exactly the same thing. So if anybody says, hey, on my shopping cart in the eShop, I, I have a problem. Then we know that in our application, we will have a shopping cart folder that represents our shopping cart feature. And we are sure that the problem is in 90% somewhere there in the files that we have in that specific folder. So once again, we have these two very specific and, and big approaches like the convention based approach that we usually use in, uh, I would say, regular MVC applications uh, 
if we build APIs, but also if we build normal uh, web apps. And then we have the feature based approach that is very popular among uh, the front end frameworks. Now you would ask yourself, what's the correct way? And as often we say in programming, that's not really a correct or a right way. It always depends on what exactly do we want to do. For instance, I would say that for a feature rich application, organizing the application by features might be very useful because if we have a lot of such feature, uh, features, it will be very easy for us or at least easier to track down uh, every single part of code that could lead to a problem in a specific uh, feature. Now, when we talk about Blazor, Blazor will produce basically or 100% single page applications. And what this usually means if you worked on, on Angular or React applications or Vue applications, this type of applications usually have a very feature rich UI. So in this case, also when we talk about Blazor, it might be maybe useful for us to organize the folder structure following this feature based approach. However, there is one important thing that we have to, to keep in mind no matter which of the approaches we choose and that would be to keep the flattest possible folder structure. That is really, really important from my point of view. Now, not so as a conclusion to this, in my opinion, is that for Blazor, I would go for the feature based approach when it comes to how I would like to organize or structure my Blazor application. So if we go one step further, we, uh, if we go one step further, we know that, uh, okay, or we decided that we want to organize our applications based on this feature based approach. But also in this case, there are two very important folder types that we still have to talk about. First, we have the so-called core folder, or you might have seen applications where this type of folder is named common or something like that. But the entire idea is that this core folder should contain the services that are shared throughout the entire application. So if we want to give some examples, here we would place files that contain our logging service, our uh, error handling service, our data service, our app state service, and so on. So all these type of services, as you can imagine from, from their names, will be services that will be used in really all our components because we will surely need to do logging in all our components and services. We will use the error services in all our components. We will, of course, use the data service in all our components because we have to really get some data into our application. And we will also use services like the app state to know exactly the state of each component, which might be useful and we'll surely have a bunch of videos regarding state in Blazor that, uh, that will come along just a little bit later. But I guess you get the main idea. This folder really contains type of services or other code that is reused throughout the entire application. So that is not pinpointed to a specific feature, but that is, let's say, responsible to, to handle different things in really all our features, all our components. And then there is a second very important folder in such a project structure, and that is the so-called shared folder. And this shared folder should, of course, contain reusable uh, components. This type of components are usually or should mostly be non-routed components. What does that mean? This should be components uh, that we cannot navigate to. This could be components like buttons, like lists, like layouts, things that we will simply reuse as a framework element or uh, as a front-end element in other components. Uh, so in this case, we, we can share them and put them in this shared folder. And whenever we want a certain button, we know that we find that button in the shared folder. Whenever we want um, a certain uh, drop-down list that looks in a certain way, we know that we have that uh, component in, in the shared folder. So yeah, mainly that would be all the theory behind how we could architect uh, our Blazor application. Uh, but I would... Uh, what I would try right now is to go in a real Blazor application. For now, uh, this is only a Blazor web, WebAssembly standard template that we get from Visual Studio when we create a new Blazor application. And I would just like to go a little bit through this folder structure and try to, uh, to create the different folders that we will need and maybe also like uh, uh, some class files just to have an idea how our application would work if we do it that way. So first of all, what we could do here is create a new folder in, in this application, sorry, to be folder, and let's call it core. And this would be the core folder. 
and as said in this core folder I would add a class for instance that would be my logging service also in this folder I would add another class that would be my data service and finally or last but not least I would add here another class that would be my error handling service and these are the type of services that I might probably also register in in the program.cs files because we would need to inject them in really all our uh, components so that would be mostly it for uh, for for my core folder now what I would have is that probably each let's think about uh, an eShop right now we also have a home page so what I would do is I would simply create a new folder for a new feature that is called home and in that folder I would then create my components and everything that I need once again especially or only for this home component and let's add let's add a razor uh, component here and uh, let's name this uh, component uh, I don't know what what could we have uh, on our, our um, home page it would be something like a summary this this should be a summary of uh, or maybe let, let's call it trending product so this component would then display products uh, that are trending in our eShop and it would display them here uh, in this home uh, uh, component of course then we could have in this home component uh, other uh, other components or in this home feature sorry uh, other uh, components that that we can uh, have maybe we have a component that is called home also let's uh, let's create it so it's a razor and let's call it home component and then we have problem if we have an eShop we have also something like uh, a shopping cart so that is a totally distinct feature in that case we would add this shopping cart this would be the feature and in this feature we would have most probably a razor component that we can call shopping cart component.cs uh, dot razor sorry and uh, yeah that, that's basically it I guess you get the idea so really for each feature we need we, we really need uh, to have a folder and in that folder we place all the code that we need for that feature now in this specific case of the shopping cart what we will will need is probably also a class that re represents a shopping cart so that uh, we know what a shopping cart is and uh, that will be probably used to map some properties that we receive from uh, from uh, an uh, API endpoint here in this shopping cart maybe we want to display currency uh, based uh, on uh, I don't know settings or based on, on a button or a drop down or a selection that that uh, the user makes and here in this case we could add a new class and uh, we could call it currency converter service and once again this will be a service but this will be a service that will be only used in this shopping cart feature so it won't be used anywhere else so in this in this perspective I guess that that we uh, start to understand basically how our, how our application will will look like so once again we will have the core folder in which we'll put all our services that uh, will reuse throughout the entire application and that will probably also add uh, to our uh, services dependency in in injection system here in blazor which is a very important part of blazor right now we only add an HTTP client but we would probably add all the services that we have in this core folder then we have different features like one of the feature is the home page and in that feature we have different or here we have two different uh, components then we have another feature which is the shopping cart so we created a new folder that represents the feature and all the code that we need for that feature will be placed here so here we created a shopping cart component we have created a shopping cart class which will represent a shopping cart and we created a very hypothetical currency converter service that will be responsible to convert between currencies but only within this shopping cart feature this is really really important 
Of course, what we could do if we have a lot of different services and if we have a lot of different uh, models and a lot of different a lot of different components, which could definitely be the case, uh, we could add a new folder here, a new subfolder that would be called uh, models. And then I would move this shopping cart class in the models folder. Let's let's move it. Uh, then I would create another folder or another subfolder that would be called uh, services and I would move the currency converter service in this folder and I will then maybe also create a new folder or a new subfolder that would be called uh, components and in this folder we will uh, move our shopping cart component uh, something didn't go well let's try once again okay I think it's it's still open or something like that Let's um let's close that and let's try to move it again. Yes, now it moved. So right now you get it, we have three different subfolders. But from my point of view, I guess that for each feature having uh one subfolder uh, here, he is basically enough. So no matter how many features do we need to add to our application, in the end, each feature will have mostly three different subfolders. And that's basically it. So I would say that this is a fairly flat folder structure. And from my point of view, I guess it would be, or it would do okay for, for my Blazor application. And last but not least, we already have this shared folder here, which uh, which contains already some, some uh, shared components like the, the main layout, the nav menu, and, and the survey prompt. Of course, these components come uh, come from uh, from the template, but here uh, in this folder we would really add all, all our shared components that we'll reuse throughout the entire application, and uh, then uh, that that's basically it. So there's nothing more to it. If you go and if you follow this way of uh, of structuring your Blazor application, no matter how big your application will get, it will always be fairly easy to find uh, the code related to a certain feature and maybe to extend it with uh, additional features to that specific code or maybe to, to find a bug or to maintain it, to change things. So it's very easy or it should be easier to find things if we do this uh, or if we structure our, our Blazor application this way. That would be it, I guess, for, for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoy this video or if you think that uh, the information that you heard here was useful for you, don't be shy and subscribe. Hit the subscribe button, it's very, very important to me to know uh, th that you are interested in, in the content that, that you see here on, on this channel so that I can uh, keep on doing that. Also, if you have anything to say, don't be shy again and just drop a comment. Uh, the comment section is open for everybody and I really do my best to answer all the comments that I get, especially if there are questions or feedback or requests for, for deep, deeper the different type of topics that you want to have covered in videos on the code wrinkles channels and so on. Once again, thank you very much for watching and have a nice day.